Statements by ministries. Minister of Community and Social Services. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in the House today to recognize June as Deafblind Awareness Month. Je prends la parole aujourd'hui à l'Assemblée pour souligner que le mois de juin est le mois de sensibilisation à la surdice cécité. In the year 2000, June was proclaimed Deafblind Awareness Month across Ontario. So I was pleased that last year the federal government extended Deafblind Awareness Month to the whole of Canada. In fact, on June 2nd, the CN Tower was lit up red and white in honour of Deafblind Awareness Month. The month of June is chosen in part because it is the birth month of Helen Keller, who was a champion to people who are deafblind around the world. Her courage and determination were an enduring example of how, despite enormous challenges, all individuals can achieve great things. Closer to home, we have our own pioneers in the deafblind community. In 1972, May Brown became Canada's first deafblind university graduate from the University of Toronto. And she accomplished that with the support of a remarkable woman, Joan McTavish, who taught herself how to be an intervener. Together, they accomplished great things. Over the last year, I've had the opportunity to visit a number of agencies that provide services and supports to people who are deafblind, such as the Lyons McGuinness House in Brantford, the Bob Rumble Association for the Deaf in Milton. I've met with staff, I've seen firsthand the care and personal attention individuals working in this sector provide to clients each and every day. The services and supports being provided to people who are deafblind are critical to their well-being, their daily activities and their future goals. Les services et les soutiens offerts aux personnes sourdes et aveugles sont essentiels à leur bien-être, à leur activité quotidienne et à la réalisation de leurs objectifs d'avenir. At my ministry, we have made progress in the past few years to improve the Intervena Services Program. Intervena Services enhance communication between individuals who are deafblind in their community, using their preferred method of communication to assist them to live as independently as possible in their daily living activities. Since 2004, we have tripled funding for the program, and we have worked with the sector to establish a policy framework to define strong program principles, objectives, eligibility criteria, and the scope of intervena services. We are now focused on working with the intervena services sector to develop a more consistent, fair, and accountable approach to funding. We have also forged a strong partnership with the sector through our intervena services human resources strategy launched in 2014. Two weeks ago, I attended the second Intervena Services Human Resources Strategy Annual Conference. The strategy is a broad sector-led human resources project designed to increase re recruitment and help develop the talent and the skills of interveners and agency management staff. For someone who is deafblind, communication barriers can seriously limit access to activities most of us take for granted, such as going to the bank or visiting the doctor. By breaking down these barriers, we are helping to build a more inclusive Ontario, one in which all Ontarians have better access to their community. En éliminant ces obstacles, nous contribuons à bâtir un Ontario plus inclusif qui favorise l'accessibilité pour toutes les Ontariennes et tous les Ontariens au sein de leur collectivité. In closing, Mr. Speaker, I encourage all honourable members to participate in the activities of Deafblind Awareness Month and to join our government in building a province where people of all abilities can participate to their fullest potential. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.